Well, I'm real excited today. I was sitting on the couch thinking, what can I come up with that my viewers will enjoy? And I looked in the mirror and I saw my hair and I said, no, 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 this is a bad hair day. But the more I thought about the idea, um, I came in, after, first of all, I came in the kitchen and I had a couple pieces of corning where I need to put away. And my storage space is very, very limited. So as you can see, right over here, you see this curtain. This is a long table, goes to the end of the room. And I made a curtain, stapled it under there, and under there I have two long shelves. That's where I keep my gadgets. And if you're like I am, you can't resist gadgets. I remember many years ago, long before y'all were born probably, I'd just gotten married, moved to Louisville, Kentucky, and that was a big city for me, really big city. It was just before Christmas, downtown, oh, it was busy, the streets were just lined with people, and you remember the I Love Lucy show, where she did the um, Vegematic demonstration in the store window. Well, there was a Woolworth, there was J.C. Penney, there was a uh, um, Stewart Department store, anything you need. It was right there in the center of Fourth Street in Louisville. And of course, the small town girl, everything I saw was exciting. And I looked up and the big Woolworth's window was bright. A man was standing in the window and he was demonstrating something similar to the Vegematic. He had the vegetables, the fruit, the bowls, everything out there and working away. I'd never seen anything like that before. In fact, um, I saw that before I ever saw the I Love Lucy show where she demonstrated the Vegematic. Well, the, my point is, I'm trying to find room for Corningware. These dishes are, take up space. So I'm feeling around in there and I'm thinking, there's a box here and a box there and a box there. What in the world is in these boxes? I pulled one of them out. And this is what I found. Take a good look. It says, Easy Stir. Where did I get that? Well, I know where I bought it. And I got to looking and I thought, pulled it out. I've never used this. And I'll guarantee you I've had it at least 10 years. Just about every gadget I've got, I've had eight or 10 years. Now let me demonstrate for you. I think one of the reasons I never used it was because I couldn't figure out how to use it. I'm gonna just dump this stuff out, all the pieces. And I think I can reconstruct what I did earlier. It took me 30 minutes to figure out what you're supposed to do with this thing. Easy stir. Ah, oh, here you go. Look what this is. Okay. What do you do with it? Couldn't find the instructions on how to put it together. So I kept playing with it. First of all, it called for four batteries, four AA batteries. I never have but three batteries. And if it calls for three, I've got two. Well, I said, well, that's out. I'm not going to be able to figure it out. I went into my battery drawer, and sure enough, I found a new package of AA batteries. So I brought them in, and it took me about five minutes to figure out how to get this little top off. I got that off put my batteries in. Now what do I do next? 
I've got all these pieces here. What are you supposed to do with them? Well, let me see. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, down here it says unlock. It took me a while to find that. Here's what you do. These little things, these little wings flop down. Mm, what do you do next? Uh, let's see. I think this go, oh, here we go. This, there's three little wings, these little beaters. Three different sizes. I'm going to try the middle one. And there's a little clip there, and that clip right on that. Okay, what next? This goes up in there like that. See it? Looks like something from outer space, doesn't it? Now what I do, I gotta find a pan. Gotta have the right size pan. Well, this is my favorite pan anyway. I use it all the time. I said, uh, this, this is gonna fit. Now watch what I do. I'm going to this got little wings on it. I think I'm doing it right. I get this going to fit perfect. Goes all the way down in. But first I have to, let's see, what do I have to do? Oh, I have to hook these little things on the side. These little wings clip onto the pan. Here we go. You stretch it. Stretch it out, and it goes right on the pan. There, you got it locked in. See? Locked in. We'll save these, put them aside. Now I'm going to show you what it does. In fact, I'm going to just go ahead. I'll take these off first, because I need to put them back on. I'm going to lay them aside. And I'm going to pour, I just happen to have a box of cook and serve jello. Oh, I'll make a little pudding here and later I'll add some strawberries or something to it and make myself a little dessert. But this has to be cooked. Putting the wrong thing in first. I will. That won't hurt. It calls for three cups of milk. Are you seeing that over here? Okay. I'll move this a little bit more so you can see it better. Okay. Now, let's get the three cups of milk in there. I'm just going to put about two and a half because I like my pudding kind of thick. Now I'm going to add other things to this pudding later. But just for demonstration, this is, this is what we're going to do. Now I'm going to add the pudding mix. I'll stir it a little bit first to get this dry pudding mix kind of mixed in with this but this is going to have to cook and you know how long it takes to cook something like this and you also know that it says stir constantly because if you don't it's going to stick to the bottom of the pan how many times have you had two things going at the same time and you couldn't work both of them at the same time and you you needed an extra hand is what you needed so i'm stirring up the dry ingredient in here and we're going to let that go like that now now i'm going to put this back in it's got these little tips on it that kind of hold it snug in the pot, in the pan, yeah. 
I got to push them down. I'm going to push that down. going to reattach these little wings. Can you believe something this simple can take you an hour to figure out? Well, it does me. So, there we go. It's fixed. You're going to like this. Let me see now. You hear that? I don't know if I can show you this. That little wing down in the bottom is going round and round like a pinwheel. It's going round like those windmills up north that they're using for electricity. It's round and round. You can stand at the kitchen and wash the dishes and do whatever you want to do. Because you got a third hand here that's taking care of your pudding mix. Now, I will stop this because when I finish it, I'm going to be putting it on the stove and it's going to stir until the pudding is ready to be poured into a dish. I'll also add, I usually add a little bit of sugar, vanilla, and an egg yolk, and about a tablespoon full of butter to my cooking So You do that, and people will think you have homemade vanilla pudding. And that's how I make my banana pudding. That's the base of my banana pudding, and my children think it's the best. You can fool anybody with that recipe. They'll never know that you didn't start your pudding from scratch. So I'm going to turn this off. Now it's got two little places that says on, and I'm going to push it down and see what the other one does. I don't know if I'm telling the difference or not. It's going at the same speed. I thought maybe it might go a little faster. Well, it's about the same. So, you've just seen one of my gadgets that's been sitting on a shelf for 10 years. I'm afraid to look because there's no telling what I'm going to find next. In fact, last Saturday, uh, my granddaughter is working on a house she bought and she's trying to furnish it and I'm picking up on the odds and ends of things I want to get rid of because I'm getting old. I don't need all these things. I don't use all these things. And so I figured she's a good recipient of my cast-offs. I looked in there. There was another box. What was it? Oh, it was a coffee press. I don't even drink coffee. Never been used. So I took it to her and I said, Here's your coffee press for your coffee in the morning. And my daughter was there and she says, How long have you had this, Mom? Well, I'm not sure how long. It's been several years. I'm going to say eight or ten years. And she says, And I can tell it's never been used. I said, No, it's never been used. I've got hand choppers and battery choppers and electric choppers. Whatever you want. But I had the crock pot, I had the slow cooker, I had the instant pot. I live alone. Why do I need all that stuff? I really don't. But anyway, uh, I wanted you to see the demonstration. Isn't that cute little gadget? You can impress your friends with this, I believe, if it works. I think it'll work though because it it scrapes right around the edge of the pan, the bottom of the pan here. It comes right around there and scrapes it. And it goes slow enough that, that it'll cook well. So I'm real excited. I'm anxious to make this pudding. And I think I'm, uh, I may add some bananas to that. And who knows, I may end up with a banana pudding. So I thought you'd like to see that today. Um, I'll be pulling out more gadgets, I'm sure. In fact, 
I have at least four thermoses. I use the same one all the time. But I keep buying another one, thinking I'll get one I like better. But I never find one I like better. This one keeps, I, I keep a cold drink in my thermos all the time when I go in it. Anywhere in my car, it's with me because if I don't have it, I'm thirsty. So I take it with me and it keeps my drink cold all day long. So for thermoses, I'm prepared if there's somebody else in the car with me, they can have a cold drink too. One day I'll probably demonstrate my jadeite. I love my jadeite. You know this past weekend, they had the um, 127 yard sale. It rained Friday, of course, wouldn't you know it would. But I've seen on on uh, my computer, on Facebook, pictures of people's collection, the things they have found on the yard sale. And I, I looked and I said, oh my gosh, why didn't I go? But I think these pictures were taken down in Tennessee, and I'm not going to drive that far for a yard sale. But it is something. Next year, when you're trying to find something interesting to do, just a fun thing to do, whether you do or don't collect, you like to look. And that you can just get in the car, fill it up with gas, if you can afford the gas, and off you go and you'll have fun. I've had fun. I've always been with my daughter and two or three more girls and we just have a ball when we start traveling the highways on the yard sale. Not long ago, Jan and I, my daughter, we went to Alabama to a beautiful table setting bash. Hundreds of ladies were there. Oh my gosh. I never saw such beautiful china, crystal, whatever. And she and I, we didn't stay for every demonstration because we wanted to go out and look for flea markets and for small thrift shops. And we did. We did find them. We didn't buy much. But we got a few things at very good price. And I bought several pieces of Fostoria American, $2 each. Uh, one or two of them were covered candy dishes. There was this eight piece set of the tea glasses or water glasses, I don't remember which it was. And I forget what else I got. For about $12, I had a, that much in Fostoria American. Now, you're not going to pass up something like that because there was a time that stuff was expensive. My sister collected it in the 1950s. She happened to work in a jewelry gift shop where they sold it and her uh, employer would often give her little gifts, and that was one of the things she would give her. It might be a nice, what I'd call a celery dish. It might be just a big round bowl, and she had all of the glasses, different serving pieces. She never used them. She had them all up in her cabinet, so when she decided to get rid of them, she gave them to her daughter. Now, when I look at my cabinet, I only started collecting the Fostoria a few years ago when I wasn't really collecting. I just run across a piece or two and the price was so good, I'd buy it. So little by little, I wound up with a nice selection of Fostoria. And one day, I'm going to display it on my dining room table you're going to see exactly what I have, and you're going to realize why I continued 
collecting it. So that's about all I wanted to show you today. I really wanted you to see this gadget. Isn't that a fantastic thing? And I've been letting it sit in under the shelf for 10 years. I'm afraid to look. I don't know what I'm going to find under there next. I know I've got, uh, um, mm -hmm, da, 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 what's it called? The electric, the, the big, the big chopping thing, mixer. And I've got my KitchenAid mixer over here. It was given to me, I think, one Christmas. Well, you can see it back in there. He just said it right here. So, I never use it. And I keep thinking, well, I'll give it to one of the grandchildren. They've already got one. I'll just hold on to it. One of these days, I might decide to bake a cake from scratch. And I wish I had my KitchenAid mixer. I know you probably do the same thing. And, oh, I wanted to show you something. You see this little hammer? It's got masking tape around. I don't even know why the masking tape is there. But it's a small one. I've had it as long as I can remember. And I think my dad gave it to me. My dad been gone 46 years. And off and on, I would need to use a hammer and I'd think, oh, if only I had my little hammer. What happened to it? My first thought was every time you get a carpenter or plumber or whatever in the house and they need a tool, you hand them your screwdriver, you hand them your hammer, and the next thing you know, those things are in their toolboxes. And that's exactly what I thought had happened to this little hammer. But no, it's just been a few weeks ago, I pulled open my big sow belly cabinet drawer. You know what the sow belly cabinet look, drawer looked like? It curved on the bottom. And I've got tools, um, glue guns, batteries, extension cords, you name it. And one day I'm looking for a specific thing and what did I find? Right in the bottom of that drawer was my little hammer. Now this is a treasure to me. Some people, they just look at it and lay it aside. No, we all have those things that have memories with them. This is one of them. I wanted you to see my little hammer. So that's all I'm gonna show you today and I hope you are enjoying my programs. I hope you are uh, sharing the videos with your friends. And I'm trying to keep up with the comments. It, it means I have to go back and check them all. And it takes a long time when they start building up. And I don't want to miss any of them. But if I do, you just have to overlook it because I'll, I'll read it eventually and I will respond when I can. First thing you need to know though is not, I'm not an expert on anything except talking. Yeah, let's say I'm a good talker. So whatever I tell you, whatever advice I can give you is just hands-on advice it things I've done myself or seen the experience, but it doesn't mean I have done a lot of research. And in order to be able to help you, I want to know that what I'm telling you is correct. Now, one of the ladies that saw my umbrellas, and I was amazed at, at the response I got for showing my umbrellas. She referred to one of them as a parasol, and it probably is, but in my mind, I'm thinking, all my life, I always 
love the pretty umbrella that you saw in the movies. Judy Garland movies, you know, where they're walking down the street, down the avenue, and they're singing and they're carrying the little lace-covered umbrella. And they're always small and dainty. Now, that was my idea of a parasol. So I went on the internet, and I thought, well, I want to make sure I, I'm right. I'm just half right. I'm just half right. Because it did refer to lacy and silky and cotton small umbrellas. This was a small umbrella that the lady was referring to, but it was solid black. Very pretty. It was the exact size of a parasol. And I'm going to say she's correct. It's a parasol. So, I don't mind being corrected, because uh, I'm not an authority on anything. And I just want you to enjoy what I have been enjoying. See this little thing right here? I didn't know the uh, Occupied Japan made anything like that. And when I spotted that, I grabbed it. And I just love looking at it. It's so cheerful, so pretty. And... You see a lot of things around my house like that. Just one thing, one piece at a time. But still, I think my jade eye is my favorite. And it has gotten very expensive, so I don't, I don't collect it anymore. I don't need it. I don't use it much. So I just want to keep it. And when I'm gone... It'll belong to my daughter. She's very anxious to get the, the uh, uh, Jada, but I don't think she's wished anything bad on me so far. So I'm going to cut out, find my little clicker. Jan says I'm not pressing the button. We're going to find out. She's right. <laughs> 